For some reason, I thought this was a five and a half anniversary update <laughs> when that already happened like three months ago with uh, LLR Imelda. And then three months from now, we'll be getting our sixth anniversary. So it came to a surprise to me that we got another LLR character so soon. I figured that it would be a thing that would occur like every six months or something like that. Nonetheless, LLR Chris, otherwise known as Bright Summoner, is part of the Glory Princess Mythical faction who can be holy in Mage class. Take notes on those class types by the way because they play a crucial part with their gameplay. Look at the talent man, more healing and when doing that, she dispels and apply one buff. Characters nowadays have higher standards, which is something that I would expect from her being an LR character and all, until you realize that she gets more than this. Just take a look at her summon skill real quick. She summons a unicorn based on her class type within 3 blocks and inherits her equipment and copies 90% of her stats. Afterwards, the skill changes to where Chris can teleport to the unicorn and not to get in 2 blocks or you can have the unicorn teleport to you. I'm just gonna say right now that this is the best summon in this game. There's so much that you can do with them depending on the class type. Check it. As a holy class, 40% of the healing effect for Chris is added to damage dealt with plus 2 range and buffs received last for one extra turn. Its command gives allies within two blocks immunity to curse wounding and buff block. After taking action, it does healing and dispels one debuff. Its two cost skill copies all of the caster's dispellable buffs to a chosen ally and changes their soldiers to radiant unicorns. Their stats are increased by 10%, immune to mobility reduction and has terrain master for three turns. It also has the miracle skill that applies damage increase and damage reduction for two whole turns, which heals. Understandable that the holy class line usually falls in line to more of this support role. But look at the talent man, Chris gets a 40% damage increase and more range which is something that I really wanted for her. It's a lot of damage increase but if you think about it, it allows her to be on par with some of the magic attacks that we have nowadays. And just be worried that you do need the unicorns alive to make Chris function more effectively. But she can easily spam those unicorns anyway so it's not a total loss. As a mage class, this unicorn's talent does a double attack in battle, skills and attacks launched by it and Chris causes all blocks and range to gain a special terrain called Thunder Seal for 2 turns. When enemies moves onto it, they take fixed damage and has their magic defense reduced. The one cost is a passive that inflicts lightning strike on the Thunder Seal terrain before battle. They lose 2 soldiers but if they have none, then they take more damage instead which lasts for 2 turns and deals fixed damage. Its 2C has a passive where if you fight enemies on the Thunder Seal terrain, its stats are increased by 20%. This skill is a single target where it becomes immune to damage if the enemy is on the terrain. Even has the Thunderstorm skill where it deals more damage to cavalry and reduces defense for 2 turns. I like the concept. That tile helps pair well with Jace, because Jace can ignore guard if the magic defense of the enemy is reduced. So it kinda sounds like a broken combo to me. And just because these unicorns are a summon, doesn't mean that they're necessarily weak. Survivability, yeah, when it comes to doing their job, you'd be really surprised. I even saw the blue unicorn one-shot people. It's wild stuff. And the yellow unicorn, the holy one, you get so much out of it. More damage and more range for Chris, helps her to rival some of the magic tactics that we have. Plus that terrain master kinda goes crazy for a lot of characters who struggle moving a lot. Both are very good. It's all about what you want, really. It's all about preference. The Holy Unicorn fulfills more of a support role that helps enable Chris too. The Mid Unicorn is more of a setup kind of thing, a lot more offensive based, but it's kind of hard to use almost. Also just remember that when you do summon these unicorns, the one state skill ends up changing to what you can act again if you teleport to it, or you can have the unicorn teleport to you, and her talent upgrades too, as long as she has them on the field. She has a glowy faction buff with the special effect of dealing 8% more damage in battle and doing even more when having 5 or more buffs. Her 3C is a combination of her summon and faction buff. This faction buff gives you a 50% damage increase in battle and heals the lowest HP ally after battle. This 3C buffs the unicorn, so the holy unicorn gets a buff where after taking action, heals the ally with the lowest HP within 3 blocks, dispels 1 debuff, and applies 1 powerful buff. If it has a debuff, then it is repeated once. If it has 5 more buffs, then it is repeated once more, which will last one turn. With the mage unicorn, it strengthens the unicorn single target skill, allowing it to do more damage, it ignores guard, if it attacks enemies in a straight line. If the enemy is not eliminated, then Chris gets to act again. After using the Stuisi, it gets replaced with the SR versions of Chris's Stuisi. 
If you guys don't know what this does, this thing is a single target skill that heals all allies after battle while dispelling one debuff. You do more damage and take less damage in battle for two turns, and it stuns demon enemies before battle for one turn. Chris does have other many great skills that does some healing, even AoE which you really only see as a mage class. Her being this strong support character is the main selling point, so she's treated more as a sub attacker. Her healing goes crazy, and the best part about it is that it's widespread meaning that she can essentially cover the entire map while even getting tons of buff from her. Having her in a holy class, you can really expand on that, thanks to the unicorn. It is considered to be the best class for a lot of reasons, you get so much out of it and it's really easy to use. Her mage form is considered to be the weaker version of her, and let me explain it in my own interpretation. I do like it a lot, I think it's really cool, the stuff you can do seems really fun, but I've seen mostly situations where I've seen her try so hard, but ultimately, it's not enough. When I was watching gameplay of Mage Chris, it was honestly so sad. She lacks the range, lacks the damage that she really needs, and those tiles doesn't do well enough to be considered that big of a threat. So you gotta build her in a way that allows her to give her a ton of in and just do a lot of damage in the first place. If you're considering building her as a mage, then you really want to have the right stuff so that she doesn't really feel as underwhelming. One good thing that I can say about it is that the setups with her at the gen can be fun. Her unicorn can hit surprisingly hard too, like I said, I've seen it one shot people. It's wild stuff, but it's 100% possible to have success with Mage Chris. We have an exclusive armor for Nemia, the range of her tile reaches one block longer, does not remove the terrain when standing on it, when other allies within two blocks stand on it, they get ride the wave. If you guys don't know what that does, it allows you to ignore two blocks of mobility reduction, meaning that you get to move two extra blocks. This one here, I couldn't get a clear look of it unfortunately, but I can tell it's an amazing buff, allowing her teammates to follow up with her. The sad thing is that you do need to be near her while standing on those terrains. For some of the casting skills, you first got Lucretia. Her golem can now be used to swap with other allies. It's too bad that she fell off in PvP, where this could have been useful long ago, but she's still fantastic in PvE, so it's amazing to reposition with anyone. Things can be said in PvP, but Lucretia herself just can't compete with anyone nowadays. I would say that this buff is a hit or miss. While it can be useful at times, it's not that big of a deal. Second casting skill goes to Lost Dam, where his 3C can now ignore guard if you're on a defensive terrain or in the desert. They being like Jays, they thrive off of those defense terrain. It's a great buff that's very situational. I say if you find yourself having to deal with a lot of tanks, then it's justified to grab it if you want to try to use them again. Third is for Luna. If she has the faction buff effect, she does more damage and her skill damage is reduced by two turns when attacking. It allows her to be a lot more consistent, we do have good stand for the faction buff to help her out, but in PvP, it'll be hard to come by due to her 3C allowing mobility for her teammates while being a faction buff too. She's more of an enabler in that area. I know it's weird for me that I'm talking about Luna in PvP, but man I kinda miss using her. That faction buff is really fun to make use of. The last one is for Porn. Remember this guy? At the end of action, if he moved 3 more blocks, he gets the lunge buff which increases his attack, skill, and mobility for 3 turns, and stacks 3 times. This guy was pretty forgetful, not that he was terrible or anything, he's still a decent attacker for regular content at least, but yeah he does need the mobility thing to do more damage. We'll be getting 4 new equips in this update starting with the weapon where you have a 100% chance to apply 1 random debuff when using skills on the enemies. This can be a second alternative to the Miracle Staff, but you're not going to get a lot of damage out of it since you don't get a lot of int increase. I know the Miracle Staff is the same thing, but it increases AoE damage, which makes it up. For the armor, when attacking in battle, damage taken is reduced up to 18% for each block moved. I would say it's mostly only good on flyers due to them engaging in single target combats. Assassins and archers, they're usually always attacking pretty safe, so not really worth it. Also really nice on aquatic soldiers too, someone like Orkon at least. With the helmet, it's so terrible. When attacked by an enemy whose HP is lower than yours, you just get more HP. You have so many other great defensive options available to you, in those specific class types too, I would order this immediately on the spot if I get one. It's not good at all. The accessory here 
disable accessory effects when attacking in combat. Otherwise, in regular content, the enemy takes more damage. I downplayed this accessory a little bit the first time I saw it. I would really consider putting this on Emir, since you do have a better chance of applying this debuff compared to the Apostle Doom, which can be easily blocked up by Overlord Badge and other immunities. It's honestly quite fantastic. You're able to disable some of the OP accessories that we have, but it still gets countered by the butterfly, so you'll have to somehow work around it. For some of the interesting banners that we should be getting, a red with Jay's, he's a bonnet locker for Osoda and is really OP in PvP due to loving defense terrains. So he can basically teleport across some of the maps in order to attack. In regular content, he's not that strong to use, just okay at least. There's better characters to use. We have a language and mobile banner. It has all of the characters related to the story here, such as Resentio, who is still a broken healer. I do recommend a lot of people to get her. Then we have a Red Up with Lightbringer, a support tank that is a faction buffer for the holy team. She's a very good tank. I do recommend a lot of people to get her as well. There was supposed to be a Wishes banner that goes up to Patricia and Goon. Same thing with the equipment banner as well, but uh, I can't say for certain because CN never got them. Apparently it was leaked that it was supposed to be, but they never did. So um, there's a chance that we may get it, you know, Global always like to do their own thing, so there's a chance, we'll see. As for the content, of course with the new equips, here comes the Eternal Forge. To my PvP people, if you see a lot of people with the butterfly accessory, then um, this would explain it. <laughs> I mean we're already seeing it, but it's gonna get worse. We should be getting the Forbidden Battleground, the Skyline Tactics PvP event, Anarchy Casting Stage all log, Extra Sacred Realm Chance, Gold Voucher from Dailies, and Floating City. A triple get of bait, but take this at face value since CN got it in this update and with Global being different, we sometimes don't get exactly what they get. And sometimes we get stuff added too that we don't know. But we are going to get the normal get of bait. This one event here where we get the Bright Summoner Letter, LLR Chris, which just gives us vouchers, like three of them. Then we got a login event. With all of the new skins, the Echo Life for Chris and the Green Bloom Soldier. The unicorns do get a change too, as you can see that they're like a shark. Is that what it is? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a shark. The Season 18 Champion skin for Lightbringer, then Season 19 Gold skin for Lipony, and Silver skin for the Star Prisma Pexis. I'm only mentioning this because CN got it in this update, but um, us global players being different and all, most likely we won't be getting this until next month due to Season 18 of the playoffs starting on the week of when this update should be dropping. And playoffs usually last like a month and a few weeks, something like that. But so we're gonna have to wait. Finally, a Machelado skin for Sagani. He always costs 4,000 crystals for the pity, remember correctly, so yeah. Alright, so that was about everything, if not most of everything that the global side are getting. As you all should know, since this is global that we're talking about, some things could be changed, some things could be added, this is how they work, I can't 100% confirm some of these stuff. A lot of these stuff is what CN got, so at least most of these should be coming, with a few things being added and changed too. That's just how the global dev works. Overall, LLR Chris is going to be amazing to use in gold content. She can be your support, she can be a damage dealer, she does so many healing and gives out so many buffs that it feels like overkill at some point. Her as a damage dealer is not bad, you have a unicorn to do like a combo setup, but it's going to be a lot more fun in her mage class if you really want to focus on more of a offensive Chris. It's creative but it's hard to execute, but having her makes a very strong addition to your team as a support character while being a faction buffer too for the Chloe team. She provides a ton of buffs and healing, and is very widespread too so she's really reliable. She's a sub attacker so she's more of a support character. Unless you take her to a mage class then damage is what she's really going to be focusing on while being a sub support character. So the roles are very reverse, but that's all I got. If you guys did enjoy this video, feel free to leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more, and feel free to let me know down in the comments how you guys feel about LLR Chris, or maybe anything else. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching, your fellow Zeke.